Well, you're looking at a nucleic acid. Actually, you're looking at a nucleotide. And here's an animation that I'm going to show you a little bit later on. What I want to do is just kind of focus on the nucleic acids, the bonds, and interactions. So I'm going to walk through DNA, RNA, actually all the way th through a protein. All right, brought to you by Curious Brain Lab. Okay, so let's look at this. So quick review, we know there's two types of nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. And we know there's the phosphate, the sugar, or there's actually five bases. Adenine and thymine have this unique interaction, but adenine goes with uracil. And we'll talk about all, the, all this, um, and you can look at my previous videos. So what I want to do is focus on showing the nucleic acids, hydrogen bonds, and the phosphodiesters at various stages of either replication or transcription or translation. And then we'll also bring in uh, peptide bonds. So here we go. Those are the three parts, right? So this right here is the phosphate. This is the sugar. This is the nitrogen base. When this connects down here to another phosphate, that's called a phosphodiester bond or phosphodiester linkage. So here's your building nucleotide. So we're going to also review the enzymes here. So just a short video. So here we go. And I'm going to use models and some paper models and actual molecular sets. Let's go ahead and do that in a second. So here's your DNA. This is one strand. So these here's sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate. Bring in the complementary strand that's running in the opposite direction, anti-parallel. And this is sugar and phosphate again. And these are your bases connected through the hydrogen bonds. So we've said sugar and phosphate, hydrogen bonds. So let's go ahead and uh, quickly remind you, throughout the video I'm going to keep emphasizing the hydrogen bond and the phosphodiester linkage. So here, one more view. All right, now let's switch to the models. Quick review here. Here's your phosphate. Here's your sugar, and we know this is deoxyribose because it doesn't have a, it's missing a, a hydroxyl a group A OH here. And then here's your, this is adenine. So how are they going to connect? Right here. So this is one, this, imagine this being the, the polynucleotide going down here. This would be the complementary strand. And right here is your hydrogen bond. There's your H bond. There's your H bond. This is A, and then this is thymine. Okay? Now let's look at the next one. Okay, I'm going to move these up out of the way. I just broke that hydrogen bond. Here's guanine. Now guanine, as you're going to see, I need to position it properly. Guanine, oh, there we go. So guanine is going to interact like this. And now I need to, all right, there we go. So let's see. It actually has three hydrogen bonds between the nitrogen and the oxygen, then this hydrogen and the nitrogen of the cytosine. So this is guanine, this is cytosine, and then this oxygen is going to interact there. There, these are your three hydrogen bonds. Now, it's not touching on the model, but I'm so right here, right here, right here. This is guanine, this is cytosine. Okay. Before I go somewhere else, I'm going to take these out, and I'm going to show you one more interaction. So, th and remember, this was, this was, um, adenine and thymine. Now take a look at this. This, there's a phosphate. Now look at the sugar. This is ribose. This is ribose sugar. So I need to, and then here's the base. So I need to, st it still interacts like this. Let me flip it around there. See if that's in view. Okay. Right there and here, those are your H bonds. This is uracil, and again, this is Adenine. Alright. Remember, DNA is constantly, so here's a model. Here's your 
sugars and phosphates, here's your hydrogen bonds. DNA can unzip, the hydrogen bonds break, and it can make another DNA side, another DNA side, or it can make messenger RNA. So as the hydrogen bonds form, the sugars and phosphates are also forming. Okay, say we leave the nucleus, we go to a cytoplasm and a ribosome, and now we have the messenger RNA, the tRNA, and here's another interaction. The temporary hydrogen bonds that are base pairing between mRNA codon and tRNA anticodon allow for this, right here, a peptide bond between amino acid chains. So uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause real quickly and just position and we're going to do the rest of the PowerPoint. All right. Now we're back. Let's go ahead and talk more about the different interactions. So here we go. And so we've got here, again, these are the nitrogen bases, sugar phosphate, and then this T would go to an A over here, and that would be a hydrogen um, bond. So you can just see this. You got the different anti-parallel. So here's your hydrogen bonds, here's your hydrogen bonds, here's your hydrogen bonds on down the line. All right, now what I want to do next to kind of close this is there's two things that are happening here. You, need, you should focus on the different enzymes. If you look here, some open up and expose the DNA molecule. Some add either more nucleotides of DNA and its replication, or they add nucleotides of RNA and its transcription. All right, and these are just some of the various enzymes. Wanna, if you want to pause for a second, this goes list them as well. Um, and I have it kind of filled out. So if you wanted to review DNA replication, you could pause the video right here. What I want to point out is you're going to have basically what I mentioned up here in the previous slide. You got helicase and topoisomerase. They're going to open up the DNA molecule. And then you got single-stranded binding proteins. They're going to kind of stabilize it so you can add in new nucleotides of DNA or RNA. So here, here it is again. So DNA polymerase. Now there are different types. I'm not going to go into the different types of enzymes. But what I want this, the purpose of this video is to show DNA and its many interactions, or nucle nucleic acids and their interactions. So we got to move on here. So I keep posting that, reposting this. Let's go ahead and look at big picture, central dogma of genetics, DNA to RNA to protein. So here's the, this is the sugars and phosphates, the hydrogen bonds. The hydrogen bonds are going to break and produce a sequence of nucleotides that's RNA. That's transcription. Then codon and anticodon, messenger RNA and tRNA, are going to produce an amino acid chain. Right? So this is DNA. Here's the sugar and phosphate. Here they are unzipping. Let's go to the animation. I think that will um, kind of really show what's going on here. I'm not going to play the full animation. I have a video where I've done this. So helicase and polymerase, they're going to open up and and topoisomerase would be here. You also would have some structural, single bonded uh, structural proteins or single stranded binding proteins as they're also called. So watch what's happening. Okay. This is the sugar and phosphate and the hydrogen bond temporarily formed. Tem you, that hold, the hydrogen bond holds it long enough to allow for the, the phosphodiester for the nucleic acid to produce. In this case, it's RNA. So I'm going to let that keep going. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next aspect. Let me go back to a couple other slides here on the PowerPoint. Now let's talk about protein synthesis. And it should be doing it right about now. All right, good. So now we talked about that messenger RNA. I'm going to stop. stop. So here's a ribosome. So that is serving as the enzyme. As Remember, DNA is... Tra replicated DNA is transcribed. RNA is being translated. Here is a temporarily temporary hydrogen bond. The sugar and phosphorus, so the phosphodiester is not involved in this. But now we have a, another bond. Hydrogen bonds along with peptide bonds. Every time you add one of these, you're adding in a peptide bond. So I'm going to let that play and go back to the PowerPoint. So the interactions that we've talked about have been hydrogen bonds, phosphodiester bonds, and peptide bonds. And this is just showing all the different amino acids. And here is a peptide bond. This right here is taking place on a ribosome. And this amino acid 
is attached to a tRNA, which attaches to the messenger RNA through base pairing, anticodon to codon, and that's pretty much it. Big picture. And there we go, just to kind of restate. All right, brought to you by Curious Marine Land. Thanks for watching.